Welcome back. Um, as you know, yesterday, some of you may know, there was a fire here in the community. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but we're happy uh, to have on, you know, uh, Steve Concialdi. He's a, a captain with OC uh, Fire Authority and also is a public information you, officer. We have you on uh, every month and uh, you brought along a battalion chief. And this is the, I think this, this is your first time here, Mike Schrader. Correct. And uh, we were talking just briefly, your area, I don't know if you call it a district or battalion, well, battalion obviously, is up in the Tustin area. Correct. And it's nice to have you here because you are also a, um, a former fire investigator, right? So you I would was. go out after something that would happen and try and figure out what was the cause, what led to it, and that sort of thing. Correct. The, the intent was not that we're just curious, but we want to take that information that we gather and then kind of reverse engineer our mm -hmm. education programs. Um, if a certain thing is causing a fire and it's, it's rising in incidents, we want to gather that information so that we can go back and kind of really target our education um, and prevention efforts to prevent it from happening in the future. That's our goal. So it's and kind obviously of, you, you want to see something suspicious as well. Absolutely. You know, uh, about one in 10 fires, about 10% of our fires or, or a little bit less are, are intentional as we call it. Yeah. Very interesting profession. and. Uh, what is the specific training that you do on that? Uh, beyond the normal becoming a firefighter, we went up to their training facility and saw what it takes, but this is, this is obviously a specialty. How do you uh, train for that? It is. Uh, there's a screening process for all, uh, at the time, fire captains um, are allowed to uh, put in for the uh, position. And then you're screened through an internal interview process and you have to just do some self-study. But after you're selected to the program, then you go through all the law enforcement training that's applicable. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of that training, you will have the basic competencies to do an origin and cause investigation, as well as interview and interrogate um, those that intentionally started fires or sus suspected of such. And then also uh, in our jurisdiction, we actually have police powers and are considered law enforcement and carry oh, okay. such credentials. So that if we do come across those intentional fires, um, we are able to apprehend suspects. And we, we're in coordination with local law enforcement, um, our partners to the different cities and, and the county that we work with. And I would think a lot of science behind that because you have to determine what, if, especially if, if, an ar if it is a suspected arson, the combustional material that was used, the pattern of it, how it works, and uh, it, it just seems very fascinating. And yeah, very we, uh, we love it. You know, it's, a, it's, a very, it's, it's quite a blessing to be able to go to work every day and enjoy what you do, and then to be able to produce a product where you can figure out what caused the fire, help to prevent future fires, and then if somebody did uh, intentionally cause it, you can bring them to justice. But the science is definitely there. Um, that's why all the training has to happen so that we know f forensically that if this case went to court, it would stand up to that yeah. high yeah. standard. It's got to be scientifically done. Interesting. And, you know, speaking of how the, the cause of fires and the prevention, Steve is on here every month. And your main topic, the umbrella topic, is always prevention. Correct. It, 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 whether we're talking about kitchen fires, home fires, drowning, prevention with, uh, you know, the proper fire detectors and things like this, smoke detectors, that's the name mm -hmm. of the game. Exactly. That's, you know, uh, kitchen fires are, um, you know, what happens more than anything else, and, you know, you, you see this all the time, people just leave what's on the stove or whatever, whatever it might be out on their barbecue or something like that. And if they were just mindful of that and uh, if doorbell rings, whatever, turn down, turn off the pan. Obviously, if it's in the oven, that's something different. But you turn off the pan, you know, I can tell you as somebody who's cooked all my life, it's not going to destroy what you're cooking to turn off the fire for a few minutes. Right. Yep. Uh, Unintended you know, fires cause significant fires in Orange County. On average, one fire, one kitchen fire occurs every three days here in Orange County. Wow. And most of them are unintended mm -hmm. cooking. Basically, like you said, they answer the, the phone, they answer the door, they attend to grandkids, they attend to their kids, walk away. And fortunately, yesterday, this smoke alarm saved the day. And we believe it saved lives. The resident was not home at the time, mm -hmm. fortunately, and it was a kitchen fire again. Now this time it was, and the fire investigators believe it was an a malfunction of an electrical appliance and we've talked about this yes. before that that's why we always recommend with a toaster a blender a coffee maker anything that's that's easily unplugged to unplug it mm -hmm. so that way there's there's no problem if, if something happens 
no, nothing will happen if it's unplugged. And then again, if you're right there with your food, what you're cooking, if something happens, uh, you could tend to it. Like if yeah. there's a grease fire, we don't ever want to grab it and run with it. We want to take a lid, carefully put it over, and put it down, and that'll, that'll stop the fire. We have some footage that we're going to show here, and I don't know, is there sound with this, Steve? Okay, so we're going to, it's about three minutes, I believe. We're, we're going to go to this with, uh, I think it's with Kenny, uh, Kenny Dossey. Okay. And uh, then we'll come right back. Sure. But we want to show this before we forget, and uh, we'll roll into that, and we'll come back with these gentlemen. What's going on here? Uh, today at approximately 9.46 a.m., units from the Orange County Fire Authority responded to a reported structure fire. We uh, arrived approximately five minutes later, and when we got here, we found a uh, fire in one of the units that had already spread to one of the other units. Our units made an aggressive interior attack to extinguish the fire and keep it contained to the two units um, that it had already been started in. But during firefighting operations, we did have one firefighter that sustained minor injuries to his arm. Uh, they're of the burn nature and he's currently being treated at the local hospital. We also had uh, four, or during the rescue operations, we did rescue four um, cats. Uh, unfortunately, one was deceased as well as one dog that was also deceased. So we were able to save five of them. Uh, however, we did uh, lose the one dog and the one cat. Um, right now, uh, units are still conducting an investigation to find out what the cause of the fire was, and hopefully we'll know what that is sometime in the next 24 hours. So what happened with us was when we got here, the <clears throat> fire was in one of the farther suites down there. It went up and ran inside the attic, some of the footage that you got. We got on scene and we started a hole right there in the middle where you see the hole that goes along. And basically what we do is we cut a hole all the way across so any fire coming this direction goes to the path of least resistance, which is up. So it comes to our hole and the fire goes up. So as the fire is racing down towards this end of the building, ready to burn this entire side of the building down, we got in the middle of it, got ahead of it, and cut a hole. As we cut a hole all the way across, there was smoke and fire coming out of the holes as we cut them. Then we backed up to here and cut two holes just to make sure the fire hadn't gotten ahead of us, which it hadn't. And then that's when we basically stopped our operation. <laughs> The guys at the same time, simultaneously, they go inside with their hoses, go find the seat of the fire, and put the fire out. Pull some ceiling and then put the fire out. I'm not sure they're investigating it right now, or the second suite over. If you look at the rafters, there's more damage in the far suite, so I think that's probably where it came from. It got up in the common, common attic area and started coming this direction. But it's under investigation, so uh, the investigators are down there right now, and they're going to come up with a cause and origin here probably in the next hour or so looked at that as like, does that mean patient? Does that yeah. mean, I didn't know what it meant. Okay, all right, we're back. And um, uh, Mike, um, you pointed out some very significant clues to this fire just by looking at the video here, right? Correct. Um, part of the training that we go through to become fire investigators is that you look at the approximately 13 different types of fire patterns um, that 
show a fire movement or fire intensity pattern. It shows that it's moving in a direction, top to bottom, left to right, and then also the intensity. Is it just flashing or is it deeply burning? I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go mm -hmm. into it. So when you walk into a scene, you can look at a house and pretty quickly determine um, you know, it's in this general area. And then you really start to have to dig and do almost like an archeological dig and be very intentional and careful in how you um, de-layer the, the stuff that's, that's left over. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, people tend to do in their, uh, in their kitchens a lot is a lot of clutter. People will often use their ovens for storage for things, uh, things that are combustible. I guess if you had a you know, I keep my cast iron pan in there. I'm not really too worried about it. <laughs> and I actually don't use my oven much because I'm out using my barbecue. But still, people will leave things in there, bizarre things. They might put their kitchen towels in there. They yeah. use it as another storage, storage cabinet. Yeah. Not and a good idea. No, absolutely not. And we, we do have a significant amount of fires um, mm -hmm. where folks uh, have limited storage in their kitchen or they've got a lot of extra Tupperware, what have you. They'll put it right into the oven. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they'll forget about it through the course yeah. of the year. Through the summer, they're not using their oven, it's hot. And then all of a sudden, the holidays hit and they go, you know what, let's fire up the oven and do our holiday cookies yeah. or what have you. Next thing you know, they've got a fire. Um, so using it as a storage thing is an absolute, uh, something that we, we talk people away from because it's, it's a recipe for disaster. It is. In addition to that, not just the inside of the oven, but the cooktop as well. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of storage material on top of that is just asking for it, whether you bump a knob and then leave, or uh, you turn something, you turn the wrong knob on, and you've got cardboard over here. Um, another another classic uh, kitchen fire that we get. And then the other one is just normal cooking operations, but you haven't allowed enough distance, mm -hmm. uh, safe, clear space on your countertop on either side of the cooktop. Because if for some reason you do have a grease fire and you've got the paper towels right next to the uh, cooktop, it becomes a, what we refer to as a receptive fuel bed. And all of a sudden that spark, flame, heat gets propagated there and now it's off to the races into your cabinetry and so forth. So um, we, we try to encourage people to really take that caution. Uh, Steve had mentioned earlier about um, you know, not walking away when you're cooking and mm -hmm. you had kind of highlighted that as well. Set an egg timer. Um, so that mm -hmm. if you're, you know, say you do have to go to the other part of the kitchen, just a little timer. We've had people take naps. We've had people answer the phone, answer the door. Yeah. It's just, uh, it, we take it for granted, but it can easily um, be deadly and can also, in the, even in the event that it doesn't cause an injury or a fatality, um, you can see in the, in the footage, it yeah, is a this is major yeah. disruption to your life. And it breaks our heart because we, we don't want to see that. No. So all no. four of these units are red tagged right now. Yeah. So one suffered extensive damage. The other three suffered smoke damage as well as there's a common attic. So the fire got into the attic. So they had to be assisted by Red Cross, three of the residents. And uh, it, it's a major disruption to their lives and then it's going to take time to rebuild. So that's what we ask yeah. you with appliances. Don't use multi-plug adapters unless mm -hmm. they have a circuit breaker on them. Keep air, air, everything clear of your cook cooking area and um, check your smoke alarms because mm -hmm. their smoke alarm in this unit that it occurred in, the smoke alarm went and off. We, I want to point out this because um, I have one of these that you, you guys gave me a while back. What's really nice about this model is it has a 10-year lithium battery in it right. and uh, you know you put it up you uh, don't have to check the battery all the time what i do on mine is because i'm kind of anal that way is i actually write a date on it Perfect. that says like end of life yeah and whatever it was <laughs> for that day i think it's 2020 yeah. for the one i have but that's how i know yeah. and i Perfect. look at it and i actually dated it probably about a year before it's really done because it says 10 years, nine years is good enough for me and I'll replace it. But they aren't, they aren't expensive at all, 20 bucks, something like that. And in many cases, you folks will have certain programs throughout the year where people can get these if right. they're low income and, and things like that. Yeah, right? Kitta has donated 5,000 smoke alarms every year and yeah. they're doing it again this year. So if somebody needs a smoke alarm, they can't afford it, they just need to contact Orange County Fire Authority gladly provide them a smoke alarm. Okay, we've got a couple minutes uh, left here. Uh, let's talk about it's end of summer, but uh, that doesn't mean uh, that kids are not out there swimming. Right. And sadly, we've had a lot of drowning deaths in this, uh, 
in this uh, county uh, recently. I know there's obviously because of the high surf, you were dealing right. with a lot of we that We just had too. one on Saturday. So yeah. since January 1st of this year, we've had 51 drowning calls here in Orange County. Mm -hmm. 19 of those have been fatal, Gee. which is very tragic. And even though those other ones weren't fatal, some of them suffered irreversible brain damage. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend is that you be cautious around the pool around in the ocean anytime you're in or near the water and don't be ever in the water alone always have somebody with you um, this past saturday down at salt creek it was a 60 year old gentleman who was enjoying a beautiful you know day at the mm -hmm. beach with his family went under a, a large wave and it crashed down on him and he still hasn't been recovered wow and so it's very tragic and so far out of those 19 fatalities um, Six of them have been people over 50 years old, and um, I'm just looking at the you stats know, right now. You know, that's an interesting statistic because we usually think it's going to be, yeah. most of the time, that it's going to be a little kid. Yeah. Right. And actually, um, 12 of our 19 fatalities have been people over 50. Wow. Yeah, 12. So That's, that's really right. a surprising and, statistic. And what it is, yeah. is a lot of times there's people are in the water by themselves. I mean, we talked about last month, yeah. the gentleman. Yes in his 70s was in an apartment complex and just in the pool. If something happens, nobody's there to help yeah. you. Where other times, if you, if you pass out, get lightheaded and dizzy, have your blood sugar drop, or you have some cardiac event, if somebody's there, they could tend to you and yeah. get you the help right away. But if, if you pass out and you go out in the water, there's nobody there to help yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. Well, we are out of time for the show. It has been great having you both on. And I know we'll see you again. I'm sure we'll see you again as well. Thanks for coming down from Absolutely. the Tustin yeah. area. Fascinating uh, information. It, it really is. And, and great to see you both.